A few weeks ago, I was browsing through some upcoming video game releases when I happened across one by the name of Mainlining that piqued my interest, and the publisher was kind enough to provide me with a key. Now that I've completed it, I feel the need to put my thoughts on the game into video format, so hey, I guess here we go. Mainlining is a game with a pretty heated concept as its focus, that being privacy in the digital age, and how that relates to the government and interception of criminal activity. There's a lot of discussion that has gone on and continues to happen over this topic in the real world, and where the line should be drawn between an individual's right to privacy and the public's best interest in apprehending dangerous criminals. As you play through mainlining, you play as an employee of the government organization MI7 as you work to track down evidence and arrest criminals, hacking into computers and digging through personal information to find anything incriminating to base the charges on. It was an interesting concept that caught my eye and vaguely reminded me of Papers, Please, both in concept and gameplay, being a sort of job simulator. Sadly, it didn't quite live up to that hope. If you've never played Papers, Please, it's a game where you play as an immigration officer along the border of a country named Arstotska, loosely based off of historically communist states of Eastern Europe. As you play, your job is to check the paperwork of those who wish to cross the border for authenticity and accuracy. If there are discrepancies between what they say and what is listed on the documents, or if the papers are forged, your job is to deny them passage. Life isn't easy in Arstotska, however, and you need to balance being accurate with being speedy, as your salary is determined by the number of people you process during the workday. Letting those through who have forged or incorrect paperwork, however, earns you a fine instead of any money, meaning that any mistakes can cause your already tough home life to take a turn for the worse. Between paying rent, having to pay for food, and taking care of your family as they get sick, you're rarely able to even maintain your current living situation, let alone thrive. This leads to one of the driving conflicts in this story. Throughout the game, you are introduced to a group going by the name of Ezek, who wish to destabilize the government of Arstotska and seat a new one in its place. You encounter numerous agents of Ezek as you play that wish for you to assist them through various methods, such as allowing them through your checkpoint or passing information along, but working with Ezek also places you and your family at risk of retaliation by your superiors and the government. This, combined with other moral dilemmas presented to the player, such as people without proper paperwork who want to cross the border to be with their families, gives the player a way to play how they want and to decide what they think is the best way to proceed. It's one of the greatest strengths of the game, and an area that I hope that mainlining would excel at. Allowing players options of how deep they want to dive into a person's private information would have been an interesting way to approach the hacking and information gathering in the game, but mainlining stumbles in this regard. While there's a lot of extraneous data and files that you don't need to peruse to find the information you need, it's rarely apparent what might or might not be helpful until you actually dig into them. The gameplay is turned from having a potential for player agency in how they want to approach each case because of this, which is a shame. I hope the game would push me to question my own ethicality as I progressed. And not only is this disappointing from a narrative perspective, but it makes gameplay quite tedious. Having to dig through many unimportant files that exist for little reason other than to obscure the ones you actually need isn't a challenge. It only truly serves to slow you down as you work to find pertinent documents. And I realize that mainlining is a game about processing information, but it just isn't really compelling to dig through so much trash. Yeah, some of the files are vaguely entertaining and characterize these names that you dig up, such as one gentleman who's a brony, but it never advances beyond little one-off jokes. The characters remain little more than a cardboard cutout. Contrast this with Papers, Please, which has many characters of similar depth, but presents them in a manner that is serious and with writing that lends credence to them as actual people. Even the recurring, ever-bumbling fool Georgi Kostava feels like a real person, giving him, to me at least, a sympathetic nature despite his amusing repeated failures to con his way across the border. Now, all of this isn't a deal-breaker for mainlining, but it's something that I think is a fairly solid gripe against some of the game's design. Moving on to the main gameplay loop itself, you spend your time in mainlining working as a government agent investigating a hacktivist group known as Thorn, finding evidence against their associates and bringing them in in an effort to get closer and take them down. Thorn plans on obtaining and cracking MI7's hacking program Mainline, and releasing it to the public in an effort to thwart government surveillance. The story of Mainlining is divided into 13 different cases, each acting as a chapter in the overall story of the game, progressing from one to the next when you bring in that case's criminal. Much of the game is spent swapping between a browser and the game's namesake, the hacking program Mainline. The general flow of the game focuses on using your browser to check out various websites that you read about, usually from your case directive or from documents that you've downloaded via hacking. When you find a promising lead, you pull up Mainline and ping the website's address to find out their IP, and then hack that using a simple command. From there, you can find out some basic information about the web server as well as download files that are hosted on it. And for the most part, that's it. You go digging around different websites that are tangentially connected to Thorn or the person that you're after and see if they have any proof of illicit activities. 
Then when you have found sufficient proof, you present it and arrest the target. Each case boils down to the same basic loop, though some have you do things such as sit through a GPS tracking segment before giving you any relevant information to start your search. By no means is it a bad gameplay loop, it's just simpler than I hoped it would be. And while there's a pretty decent change up in gameplay later on, it's only in the last few cases after you've completed about 80% of the game. It definitely made things more interesting, but it was a case of too little too late in my opinion, which doesn't make it a bad game, just somewhat repetitive and dull. Where my main complaints truly lie are in how each case finishes. You spend your time digging through files, compiling evidence, and trying to piece together the solution to the puzzle before you, but each case only has one correct solution, some of which are a bit arcane. There are times where a case has multiple pieces of evidence that feel like they should work, but because it isn't the specific solution that the developers had in mind, it's flat out wrong. And the game doesn't give any clue as to which part of the solution isn't correct, leading to you swapping out different pieces until you find the solution that works. There are other game series that have a problem with this, I'm looking at you Ace Attorney, but generally in other games it's pretty rare, while in mainlining it felt like almost half the cases could have multiple solutions. One pretty egregious example was a case where an individual had sent a message to someone they were writing code for, and said, hey, don't say anything to anyone about me writing this code for you, I don't have a license to legally write software, which I presented as evidence assuming that a confession was perfectly acceptable. As it turns out, the evidence that the developers wanted was a snippet of said code that was exchanged between the two parties that by itself gave no indication of any illegal activity. It is unbelievably frustrating to have to waste a bunch of time on a single case because there's only one correct answer, yet whether or not the evidence you have will suffice is ambiguous. This also relates to a couple of other gripes I have. In general, most of the cases are really short, unless you have to spend forever finding the correct solution. And if you try to arrest someone without the correct evidence, nothing happens. You're shown a splash screen that basically tells you you done goofed without any sort of penalty, which, while a good thing considering the dubious nature of evidence, removes any sort of worry about failure or drive to actually do well. Not only are there problems with the gameplay design, but there's a myriad of bugs and other mistakes in the game. Some are simple like typos, which can be hand waved away with the excuse that all the documents in the game are supposed to be written by people and are intentionally portraying poor typing skills, but the sheer number of them makes me doubt that. There are also a lot of problems with placeholders being left in the game, including a hacking program whose pop-ups are simply named something along the lines of hacking program name, as well as just a seeming lack of polish and QA done on this game. Half of the time, it seemed that the splash screen at the end of each case broke in some fashion, either formatting being done incorrectly so that the text was covering itself up, or the recent news section being blank, or both. There was even a case where I had to provide evidence of a hitman committing a murder, and the article on the splash screen said that he was arrested for illegally writing software because they didn't give him his own text. Frankly, it's almost laughable how poorly this game was made in many respects. These issues, combined with the lackluster gameplay loop, ultimately combined to make mainlining a pretty poor game. And yet, part of me still likes the game despite these flaws. I'm not sure if it's the charming style or the fact that I truly was looking forward to it and hoped that it would turn out well. It could have turned out so much better and been really good, but the devs really dropped the ball on this one, and I can't recommend it unless you're okay with spending the $10 on it and coming out feeling disappointed. I know I sure did. Hey guys, if you made it this far, I just want to thank you all for listening to me prattle on about the aspects of mainlining that disappointed me. As always, if you have anything to add to the discussion, the comment section is down below. And if you'd like to help my channel grow, liking and sharing my videos is the absolute best way to do that. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. I know it's not about a widely heard of game, but I wanted to get it off my mind. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time.